Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be bringing you the third of my big catch-up book hauls. I sort of fell out of love with doing book hauls for quite a while and I stopped doing them. But obviously that has changed. I've completely fallen in love with them again and I really see this channel as a way of like chronicling, keeping a record of my reading. So I really do want to catch up with all of the books that I missed out on hauling. I've been pretty good at keeping up with hauling physical books, but it's like um, ebooks and e-arcs that I've really fallen behind with. I will leave my first two catch-up hauls linked down below if you're interested in watching those. I'm gonna start off with the non-fiction today, the first of which is Rest in Power, The Enduring Life of Trayvon Martin by Sabrina Fulton and Tracy Martin. On a February evening in 2012, 17-year-old Trayvon Martin was walking home while talking to his friend on the phone. A neighborhood watchman shot Trayvon Martin and ended his young life. This man was briefly detained but released by the police. Five years after his tragic death, Trayvon Martin is still in our minds. And rightly so, he has become a symbol of social activism. I think this is going to be a really important book, particularly in the current political climate. I really hope to get to this book soon because, as I said, it is a very, very important one. The next book I'm going to talk about today is Catelyn Moran's Moranifesto. I have quite mixed feelings on Catelyn Moran. Her latest book is made up of a bunch of her columns over the years and also some content that is exclusive to the book. She deals with a number of different topics ranging from benefits to swearing the 1980s to Benedict Cumberbatch. While I do tend to overall enjoy Catelyn Moran's writing, there's always something in her books that I just don't quite agree with and find highly problematic. So we'll see what this one holds. The final non-fiction book I'm going to talk about is The Lonely City by Olivia Lang. This is a memoir and a biography about being lonely. When Olivia moved to New York City in her mid-30s, she found herself growing very accustomed to loneliness. And in this book, she explores what it means to be lonely. Are we more or less lonely than the generation before us? What does it mean to connect to other people? Loneliness is a concept that I've become increasingly interested in. I suppose as someone who has gone from like being with another person every single day to not having that and also being sort of fiercely independent and very comfortable in my own company. This is just something that I find really interesting and I've found it really fascinating how different people deal with loneliness in different ways. So yeah, this is something I want to pick up really soon. The next book I want to talk about is a very short little book. It's a collection of cartoons, essentially. And that is Big Mushy Happy Lump by Sarah Anderson. You've probably seen a lot of Sarah's illustrations floating around the internet, and this is just a collection of them in a book. They are so hashtag relatable. I think if you are a young woman, you will particularly relate to these. I am going to be briefly mentioning this in my wrap up so I don't feel like there's an awful lot more I can say here. <laughs> Moving on to some more general fiction or literary fiction, the first book I have is Idaho by Emily Ruskovich. This is a debut novel and it is apparently best to know as little as possible going into this book. All I will say is that it is about a family and it is told through multiple perspectives. The family travel to a mountain clearing in order to collect some birch wood and then something happens that will change the family forever. This is a book about violence and love and how the memory of what has happened reverberates through every character in the book. This sounds absolutely fantastic and I cannot wait to get to it. The next book I have is A Line Made by Walking by Sarah Baum. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, what drew me to this book was the fact there is a fox on the cover, and foxes are my favourite animal. But then, as I started to look into this book more, it's actually ticking quite a lot of my boxes. It is set in rural Ireland, and any book set in Ireland automatically attracts me. And it is about Frankie, who is a 20-something artist who is struggling with urban life, and just life in general. So she retreats to her family's rural home, which has been left empty for three years since her grandmother's death. Surrounded by the countryside and the creatures that live there, Frankie can finally grapple with the things that brought her to this point. Her mental health, her time at art school. And it is here that Frankie picks up photography once more and regains her footing in both life and art. This book is an exploration of wildness and community and art and mental illness. So it is ticking so many of my boxes and I cannot wait to get to it. Next book I'm going to talk about is The Doll Funeral by Kate Hamer. You may know this author from her earlier book, The Girl in the Red Coat. And a fun little fact, she is an alumni of the English department at my university. She was in the same department as I am. I'm gonna let the blurb of this book speak for itself. My name is Ruby. I live with Barbara and Mick. They are not my real parents, but they tell me what to do and what to say. I'm supposed to say that the bruises on my arms and the black eye came from falling down the stairs. But there are things I won't say. I won't tell them I'm going to hunt for my real parents. I don't say a word about Shadow who sits on the stairs or the wasp lady I saw on the way to bed. 
I did tell Mick that I saw the woman in the buttercup dress, hanging upside down from her seat belt deep in the forest at the back of our house. I told him I saw death crawl out of her. He said he'd give me a medal for lying. I wasn't lying. I'm a hunter for souls and I'm going to be with my real family. And I'm not going to let Mick stop me. If that does not sell this book to you, I don't know what will. The next book I want to talk about is On the Other Side by Carrie Hope Fletcher. And I wasn't sure if this was the type of book I'd be into, but the more I read about it, the more it sounds like something I would definitely love. And I'm such a big fan of Carrie, so I knew I wanted to pick this up when I read more of the description. This is about a woman named Evie Snow, who at the age of 82 passes away surrounded by her children and grandchildren. When she reaches her own personal door to heaven, she finds herself transformed into her 27 year old self, but the door won't open. Evie's soul must be light enough to pass through. So she needs to get rid of whatever is making her soul heavy. For Evie, this means unburdening herself from three secrets that have weighed her down for 50 years. This book sounds fascinating and it sounds so sweet and magical and romantic and I cannot wait to read this. I think it's going to be just a really nice easy read. Before I get into like proper YA, I'm going to talk about a book that kind of sits in that nice little cusp where books like The Night Circus do, where I think everyone can enjoy them and they just sound like really good fantasy novels. And that is Carnivalesque by Neil Jordan. This is about a boy named Andy who walks into Burley's amazing hall of mirrors and then he walks right into the mirror and becomes a reflection. Another boy who looks like Andy but isn't Andy goes home with Andy's parents. And the real Andy is literally pulled into another world where anything can happen. This sounds like a really amazing fantasy book and I think would be really good for fans of the Night Circus. Now I have a couple of books that belong to YA series. First up I have King's Cage by Victoria Aveyard which is the third installment of the Red Queen series. It's difficult to talk about this book without giving spoilers for the other two books but basically the premise of these novels is you have the Silverbloods and the Red Bloods. Mayor Barrow has been brought up amongst Red Bloods. She has Red Blood parents. But she finds herself with the power of the Silver Bloods. The Silver Bloods have these sort of magical powers that the Red Bloods don't have, and the Red Bloods are like. I suppose the peasants. I really enjoyed the first book of this series, really didn't enjoy the second book, so I'm hoping the third one will pick it up a little. I'm a little bit over books that have like um, difference conveyed through types of blood. I think it's kind of been done before, but I did really enjoy the first book, so I'm hoping this one will pick it up a little bit. And the final book I have is Forever Geek, which is the sixth book, I believe, in the Geek Girl series by Holly Smale. I've only read the first book in this series, but I really, really loved it, and I really do need to continue with it. I now own all of the books in the series. If you don't know anything about this YA series, it is to do with a teenage girl who is a stereotypical geek until her life is changed when she's picked up by a modeling agency. What I really, really enjoyed about the first book was the characters and the relationships between the characters, particularly the parental relationships. For me, it wasn't really the story or the plot that drove it, but those, those very intimate and close and wonderful relationships. So I really do need to start trucking on with this series. So they are all the books that I'm going to talk about today. Do let me know if you've got to any of these yet or if you're intrigued by any of them. Also, do let me know if you fancy a buddy read of any of them at any point. I believe the next time I talk to you guys will be in a couple days for my February wrap-up where you will hear about all of the books that I read in February. So until then, I hope you're all well and I will talk to you guys in a few days.